But the thing that really got me this week, well, it really happened, I think, last week was up in Philadelphia. Um, and it's the whole Joel Embiid saga that's going on. And I'm going to preface my point by saying this is that a lot of times organizations, well, a lot of times, they have more inside information. They know what's going on more, though, more so than, than anybody else. So a lot of the information that they let out sometimes won't be all of the information, which is the case with Philadelphia and NBA's injury, and hence is why the NBA did an investigation into those statements that were made by the Philadelphia 76ers about Embiid not being able to start the beginning of the year. And the question goes back to, okay, so, so what happened in between the Olympics and the beginning of the season? Did he have a setback? Was the injury much more than what they let on? And as a result, the NBA came in and said, you didn't give us the full diagnosis to that injury and you're being fine. So obviously there's something more there with Joel Embiid that they did not disclose or want to disclose. Again, teams don't want to put out a lot of information at the beginning of the year like that. Listen, they got to sell tickets, you know, season tickets to the – ticket holders to the suite holders. Um, so they're, they're not allowing that information to come out until a lot of that is solidified. But also, too, I, th- I think a lot, of, a lot of this falls on Joel Embiid for being a little bit more mature from this perspective. He came out and said that he's, he doubts if he plays in back-to-back games. I mean, you can't say that. That's just, this is my opinion. Because the ramifications on what that have, not just – physically on a team because you change the dynamics and how you play. This league is all about continuity. This league is all about camaraderie. When you play, especially when you have new players on the roster, that's when you grow together. Look at Boston. It took Boston five years of going through a lot of stuff, Eastern Conference Finals, reiterations of the coaching staff, you know, but also some players to finally get a championship. But though the core group had to play together. And I know a lot of talk around the Philadelphia a- uh, area, uh, whether that's talk shows or through the fan base, has been we need to preserve Joel for the playoffs. But yet and still, you can't diminish having a new roster and being able to gel and be on the same page and develop continuity by playing 40, 50, 55 games, 60 games with that new group in order to be able to compete in a seven-game series in the playoffs. And that's what you can't discount, I think, at times, by using the we need him for the playoffs excuse, you discount the time that you need to spend to develop that chemistry during the course of the season, and that's what's being lost. I love Joel Embiid. I hope he's not injured to the point where we're talking about coming back in January or February because, to me, you want the best players on the floor because when you have that, you have the best product on the floor, and now you have a level of competition that everybody can enjoy. Whether you're a Sixer fan or not, doesn't really matter. You want to see the best play. But what's going on in Philly, I think, is a detriment a little bit to the league and what it stands for because back in the day, and I, I hate to be that guy that's talking about back in the day, you know, I came into the league off of a holdout with a severe back injury. But I played through it, had a brace on. Um, when I tore my ankle up, uh, came back and played a severe tendonitis in my knee, atrophy in my uh, thigh, uh, uh, MCL. But I didn't want to miss games. And I think the beauty of a Michael Jordan – and a Kobe Bryant, and I'm just using those two because they were iconic figures, their mindset was this may be the only chance that a fan will be able to see me play, in particular when you go on the road. At home, it's a little different story. But when you're on the road, this may be the only opportunity for this fan to see me play, and I want to be there by hook or by crook. And and now Allen Iverson was another example of that, of a player that no matter what happened – the night before injury, they wanted to play. So we're going to keep our eye on that Philadelphia situation and what's going on there with Joel and B. 
Check out new episodes of The Jim Jackson Show every Thursday. Watch on the Rich Eisen Show YouTube page. Follow the show on Instagram at Jim Jackson Show or listen wherever you get your podcasts.